You know one thing that I find annoying about some 3D printers? The hot end fan that never turns off. Let's turn this off for now. On a lot of 3D printers nowadays, there's a 12 volt switchable port on the main board that can be controlled by the firmware that you plug your hot end fan into. So when the hot end gets to a certain temperature, the fan will come on. When it starts to cool down, the fan will shut off. This makes it very convenient to leave your printer in the on position and ready to print most of the time. On the old school ramps board, which a lot of printers still use, including this one, the 12 volt switchable port was never an option. They expect you to hook up the fan like this. The hot end fan would be plugged into 12 volts from the power supply. I piggyback my hot end fan on these two connections as it comes into the ramps board. On some ramps boards there is this connection here that is 12 volt but it's coming directly from these inputs. It's not switchable. So all we're really missing here is a switch that can be controlled by a pin on the ramps board. All the functionality is already baked into Marlin, we just have to enable it. So today I'm going to show you how to take a TIP120 transistor, hook it up as a switch, and make your printer a little quieter when it's not printing things. Before we get started, I do caution you. If you feed incorrect voltage into your ramps board, you will fry that board. So be extra careful that all your connections are correct and nothing is shorted out. With that out of the way, let's get started. We only need a couple things to complete this project. A TIP120 transistor, a 1K resistor to protect the pin that's on the main board, and a diode. This is a 1N4004. This will keep any voltage from flowing backwards into our transistor and then to our main board. So the input of your RAMS board is going to be fed by your power supply. So we're just going to piggyback on these inputs to power our fan. So just for this example, we're going to take where the input of the 12 volt would be and we're going to piggyback on top of that and we'll put that in our power rail. Then we'll take the negative side and put it in our negative rail. Then we'll take the positive side of the fan and we'll assign it to its own rail. And we'll take the negative side to the fan and assign it to its own rail. Then we'll hook up the diode. The leg on the side of the diode with the line, that's the negative leg, that will be on the positive rail shared with the positive side of the fan. This is just to keep the power from flowing backward if the fan were to generate some energy. So that's the negative side of the diode, and then the positive side of the diode will be on the same rail as the negative side of the fan. Now we can tie in our power rail to the rail where the positive side of the fan is. Now we'll hook up the TIP120 transistor. This is the front side of the transistor. We'll just put it on three separate rails somewhere on the breadboard. The center pin on the transistor is the base pin. It will be on the same rail as the negative side of the fan. So there's the base pin. It's on the negative rail with the fan. The right side of the transistor is the collector. This will just go to the main negative rail, or ground. Then we'll set our 1K resistor to span two different rails on the board, just so it's easier for you to see. One side of the resistor will go to the transistor, the left pin, which is the emitter pin, like that. And the other side of the resistor will go to the ramps board. Now you can use any of the software controllable pins on the ramps you'd like, but I'm going to use pin 6. It's a signal servo pin. It's located right here, and I just know I don't use it for anything else, so that's the pin I'm going with. And that's all the wiring done. Now let's do a table drawing just to make sure everybody's on the same page. You've got your 12 volt printer power supply over here. You've got a negative and a positive. You've got your ramps over here. You have a negative and a positive input and pin six. You have your tip 120 transistor. You have your fan down here. You have a diode. And you have a 1K resistor. So the positive side of the fan will go to the negative side of the diode. 
and it will be wired to the positive of the 12 volt power supply. The negative side of the fan will be to the positive side of the diode and the center base pin on the transistor. The collector pin of the transistor will go to ground. Pin 6 on the RAMS board will connect to the 1K resistor and the other side of the 1K resistor will connect to the left pin on the transistor which is the emitter pin. As always, RAMS is directly connected to the 12 volt power supply both positive and negative. Because I feel like I wasn't 100% clear on explaining that, here's a picture I drew. Now I'm going to make a really quick breadboard so we can mock it up and use it as a module on our printer. Transistor's on, I'm just going to lay it back. We'll take our diode and we'll hook the non-stripe side or the positive side to the center pin or the base pin on the transistor. Then I made a quick pigtail that will hook into my 12 volt power supply because I already have the opposite end hooked up over there. The negative side of my input power will go to the right leg on the transistor. That's the collector pin. The collector pin set up. Now we'll hook our 1K resistor on the emitter pin, which is the left pin of the transistor. Now we'll hook up this side of the resistor to the board, but it's going to go to a jumper that connects to pin 6 on the ramps board. So the resistor can be parked right there, but then we'll add the jumper and the pin next to it. We've got that side of the resistor hooked to a jumper. Then I also made a pigtail that will tie into my existing fan on my printer. I'll show you how it all hooks up to my ramps board in a second. Now the positive side of the diode is going to hook to your base pin, but the positive side is also going to be hooked to the negative side of your fan. So we'll have to add that in. So the fan lead has been added to the positive side of the diode and the base pin. The negative side of the diode will be connected to the positive side of the fan. There's the positive side of the fan on the negative side of the diode. It will also be hooked up to the 12 volt positive input from the power supply. And now it's all soldered up. We've got our lead that goes to pin 6 on the ramps board, our voltage input lead, and a lead that will hook to our existing hot end fan. So you can see on my extremely messy ramps board that I have a lead that already ties in to the 12 volt supply that goes directly into the ramps board that I use for my existing hot end fan. Then I have an opposite connector that hooks it directly up to the 12 volt supply. This goes straight to the hot end. So we'll take our newly made module and we'll hook up the fan side and we'll hook up the power input side and then the pin that's going to control the fan coming on and off will be pin 6, this lead right here. Now if you plug in your printer and turn it on, you're not going to hear the hot end fan spinning. We need to make a quick change in Marlin first, so let's head into Marlin. This is Marlin 1.1.8 and it has been already configured for this machine. We need to just make one quick change to be able to use pin 6 to control that hot end fan. So let's head into configuration underscore adv.h and let's do control F and do a fine on E0 underscore auto. This is where you can set whatever pin you'd like to control a fan. You can control up to five. We just want to control the extruder fan, so we're going to use E0 auto fan pin. We'll set this to six because that's where we have our switch or our transistor plugged in to be able to control that fan. You can set whatever temperature you would like for that fan to come on. We're just going to leave it at default for 50. And you can set how fast that fan's going to turn. We're going to leave it on full blast, 255. That's the only change you need to make. Go ahead and upload to your printer. Now the upload's complete, let's head into printer face. Make sure you're on the right COM port and at the right speed. Click connect. The temperature of my hot end is currently 32 degrees Celsius. That is not hot enough to kick on this fan. You can see in here the fan is not spinning. The fan should kick on at 50 degrees Celsius, so let's go ahead and set our hot end to 60. Once at 50 degrees, the fan kicks on. You can hear it running now. We'll set it to off. And when the fan cools down to underneath 50 degrees Celsius, the fan turns off.
My next thought is that transistors can get pretty hot, and that could cause us some issues as far as where we place this module. So let's test it. I've been running this fan for five hours, and the highest temperature that I've seen is around 102 degrees Fahrenheit, so about 38 degrees Celsius. So you shouldn't have to worry about this transistor getting hot when you're running it on your printer. So we know a transistor doesn't get too hot, so I'm just going to put some tape on it to keep anything from shorting out. You don't ever want to feed 12 volts straight into a RAMS pen, because you will fry your mainboard. And I think I'll just zip tie it right to this door. We can do a little wire cleanup, but then we can shut the door, and everything's all back nice and neat. That is so much nicer. So there you go. Now we have a firmware controlled hot end fan for just a couple of dollars worth of electronic parts and a little bit of time. I do caution you again when working with your main board and switching around some wires, be extra careful. I don't want anybody to ruin their machine by doing something that I have done. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.